and welcome to our weekly live stream. Hi, everybody. Mike Huckabee from the Huckabee Theater in Hendersonville, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, where we'll be taping our television show this weekend for TBN that you do not want to miss. Boy, is it going to be great. Joining me is senior producer for the show, Pam K. She's with me each week. We take your questions. How about that? So you can send us questions in the chat. If you like more visibility, send us a super chat, whatever that is. Moderators watching the chat for your questions. We'll get to as many as possible. We also have some wonderful video that we will be showing you in the course of our live stream today. Intersperse with your questions and a whole lot more. For example, today we're going to talk about Donald Trump getting back on Facebook. You know, he's been banned for a while, as well as from Twitter. He's back. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre continues to deal with the fallout over Joe Biden's document scandal. It just keeps getting worse. But there's good news for Joe Biden. Kamala Harris is his vice president. And if he thought he was the only one making bad news, his vice president basically says, hold my beer and watch this. She makes mincemeat of the Declaration of Independence. And we'll talk about that and show you the video all happening right here today. One of the features that we try to do each week is to uh, do a little pre-show poll, asking you a question as you're waiting for the chat to start. This is kind of fun for us and hopefully fun for you. Pam, what is our poll this week? This is a fun one. Okay. Okay. Would you rather be stuck in a room for a day <laughs> uh, <laughs> with Al Gore, Kamala Harris, or a honey badger? I'll take the honey badger for 10, Alex. I just Are you kidding? You, wow. I have to tell you, honey badger is winning out by 92 uh, percent, around 400 votes already this afternoon in the pre-show <laughs> poll. Kamala Harris with 3 percent, with Al Gore with 3 percent. I have to tell you, Gov, I didn't know what a honey badger was, as did Martha Toll, who wrote uh -huh. in and said, look, I don't know what a honey badger is, but I'll take my chances. So that's how I feel. You know, I, I kind of am with her. I sort of know what a honey badger is. But I'm figuring I've got a I've got a shot with a honey badger, yeah. you know, might be able to wrestle it to the ground or put it in the freezer for food. Uh, Al Gore, Kamala Harris. Uh, I think I'd rather be in a room of sharp knives because I think it would be about as entertaining. I just can't imagine how uncomfortable. Yeah, after reading up a little Wikipedia work on honey badger, apparently sharp knives and honey badger. Very similar. Very similar. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Uh, boy, that's something, isn't it? it what, is 90, 90, 92%. 92%. For the, taking a chance on a honey badger, even if you didn't even know what it was. So there you go. With your hands tied behind your back and a blindfold, you'd still rather be in the room with a honey badger Absolutely. than Al Gore or Kamala Harris. I think that's pretty funny. Hey, if you enjoy watching the show, do us a favor and hit the like button. We want to get to 1,500 likes before the end of the stream. Now, you may wonder why. why? Are you just so egomaniacal that you have to have that many likes? No, it has nothing to do with that. Here's what it is. It's real simple. The more likes that happen to a YouTube telecast like this, our live stream, then it boosts us in the algorithm and then more people are told that this video is on the air. It's that simple. You know, I wish it were that you got to just sign up for something and you were notified. But the way these social media companies work is that uh, there has to be engagement. Engagement means that you're interacting with the videos that you're watching. So if you hit the like button, if you hit the subscribe button, all of those things help boost the amount of people, even the subscribers, that will actually know what we're doing. That's why. So it's not, it's not just to say, like us for our ego's sake. It's like us because we think the message is worth sharing. So smash that like button and be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. Subscribe to the channel so you'll know when we're going to be doing something like this. If you hit the notification bell, you'll get a notice. And uh, be sure to let us get your comments. By the way, we always have a favorite comment from last week's live stream. This one comes from Don Cook. It was a long one, so we did have to shorten it. Just a little, but it's really good. Here's what he says, and I quote, As a Marine, I took an oath to uphold the Constitution. Veterans spent years of their lives to protect it. Our politicians are not, and it is a slap in the face. 
It certainly is, Don. We thank you for your service to this country as a Marine. And it's actually sad that those who have served in our armed forces uh, have to be concerned that there are politicians who seem to just trample over the basic fundamental doctrine of our Constitution. Well, that's a response to last week. My question for you this week is this. Will the document scandal destroy Joe Biden's presidency? Will it? Leave your comments, uh, your answers to that question in the chat of the comment section below. Will Joe Biden's document scandal wreck his presidency? We're going to get to some stories. I said from the beginning, one of the big stories of the week is that Donald Trump is coming back on Facebook. Now, Facebook didn't just say, sure, come on back. Everything's cool. We love you. Uh, they don't love him. Uh, but they realize it, it's a little outrageous to have someone who was elected president of the United States, someone uh, whose presidency was marked by being hunted down by the likes of uh, sharp-toothed Adam Schiff, who lied his bodily parts off. Let me just leave it there. When he would hold up papers and say, I have evidence that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians. I've got it right here, evidence. And he never did. He had nothing, absolutely nothing. He lied and lied and lied and lied about it. And thank goodness for Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House, who has uh, refused to let Adam Schiff be back on the Intel Committee or Eric Swalwell, you know, the one who dated the Chinese spy, Fang Fang, um, because he said, these people can't be trusted. Schiff repeatedly lied as chairman of that committee. Swalwell couldn't pass a background check because of his relationship with the Chinese spy, and the FBI actually went to McCarthy and basically warned him about Swalwell. Uh, Swalwell also leaked classified, sensitive information to the press, and for that he got booted off. Now, they're whining like little girls. Uh, it's just hilarious to watch them. You'd think that they think they have a right to the committees. What's really funny is that Kevin McCarthy, I think he has good justifiable reasons. They say it's only political retribution. If it were, those are the new rules created by, guess who? Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats, who took Republicans off committees because they didn't like the politics. And it wasn't just Marjorie Taylor Greene, who they removed from all committees. They took Jim Jordan and Jim Banks off the January 6th committee, and they put their own little homegrown so-called Republican uh, pets in there, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinziger. So pardon me if I don't weep my eyes out over all of this. Anyway, Trump's back on Facebook, and uh, we shall see what he posts, and will he get in trouble with them again? My guess is yes, he will. He can't help himself. I want us to uh, get to some video clips because these are always fun. Uh, it's just hard not to cringe when you watch Kareen Jean-Pierre at the White House podium. First of all, she always does this head bobble and never looks up. She's always looking down because she's flipping through notes, trying to see exactly what she's going to read. If you notice, she never just answers, uh, you know, from her, from her heart, from her head. She's got to find it in her notebook and then read it verbatim. But the worst part is she constantly says the same thing. Let me be very clear. The president takes documents and classified information very seriously, very seriously. Oh, yeah. You're so clear that nobody knows what you're saying. And if he takes it so seriously, how come he's got boxes of this stuff strewn about everywhere he's touched? He's like Pigpen in Charlie Brown. Wherever he goes, this little dust cloud of classified documents are left behind. It's, it's insane. So watch uh, Karine Jean-Pierre. Uh, first of all, this one is about selling U.S. oil reserves to communist China, which why would we ever do that? Here's her attempt to explain. Congress has passed uh, bipartisan legislation that would ban the export of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to Chinese companies. Given that oil has flowed to China from that reserve during both this administration and the previous one, is that the type of reform that the president would potentially support? 
So look, uh, I think this is a little bit of what uh, the secretary was talking about just moments ago. This bill uh, addresses a non-issue. We're very clear on that. Oh, you've been very clear on that. So clear, so clear that we don't understand a thing you're saying. Um, her next big moment was talking about COVID. And uh, she's been very clear that COVID is not over, even though Joe's not so clear. Watch. COVID isn't over. Uh, we've been very clear about that. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. Uh, it's But the pandemic is over. Pandemic is over. So says Joe. Noreen says, we've been very clear. COVID isn't over. Who do we believe? You know what? I don't believe either one of them. That's, that's who I believe. Nobody. Nobody in that White House. That's, that's what I truly believe. Then I love this one. Um, gasoline prices are 46% higher right now than they were when Joe Biden took office. For a while, they were almost 100% higher. Okay? So he is touting that fuel prices are lower. Okay? Lower than they were at their peak under him but still 46% higher than they were when he took over from Trump. Yet Corrine Jean-Pierre says, oh, uh, not the Biden people have anything to do with the prices. It's, of course, the Republicans. Now House Republicans are using their n narrow majority to force the American people to pay higher gas prices just as big oil companies are amassing record profits. What's even more alarming is that this isn't this is only this is not the only attempt by House Republicans majority to raise costs on middle middle class families. House Republicans are also pushing a tax increase on middle class families and inflation worsening tax cut for the rich and high prescription drug costs as well. Well, first of all, everything she just said is simply not true. Republicans are not pushing for higher taxes on the middle class. They are not pushing for tax cuts for billionaires. They are not pushing for fuel prices to be higher. Everything she just said is untrue. I, I don't understand, Pam, it's almost like the press really, they don't just, they ought to be screaming at her and, right. and demanding that she prove that what she just said has a semblance of truth. It has no semblance of truth, not at all. She will say, oh, the Republicans, they want to uh, cut Medicare and Social Security. That is absolutely not true. It is not on the table. It would be as if I went out to the podium and said something like, the Democrats want to cut off the big toe of every male over the age of 10. Furthermore, they want to cut the tongues off of every known Karen in the world who has been known to yell at people in their neighborhood. And then... They want to ban lettuce and tomatoes from salads that you can only have a salad with radishes. Now, people would say, well, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Nobody has suggested that in the Democrat Party. Doesn't matter. You can just go and lie about it. That's what I have a real problem with. Yeah. And nobody's holding her accountable for these outrageous accusations. But when she doesn't want to ask, answer a question, she'll hide behind the Hatch Act which prohibits federal employees from engaging in politics. And she say, uh, I'd love to answer that, but I can't because of the Hatch Act. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you just answer this? That's a very political answer she gave. She's always blaming the Republicans. You can't get more political. Than well, I also call it the, you know, the, the walk away and come see me. Yeah. Because she's she's starting to lean on that a little bit, too. Yeah. If, she's, if she can't answer at all, doesn't have anything in her book, doesn't have anything in here, it's the walk away. Right. Come see me. So, yeah. Got to go. Got to go. Are, are the one that I found really funny is she says, you'll have to take that up with my colleague at the White House Counsel's Office. My daughter was talking about this week how ridiculous that is because, as you know, Sarah was the White House press secretary. And she said the one thing that can't happen is the White House Counsel doesn't talk to the press. That's what the press secretary does, not the White House Counsel, who never talks to the press. So when she says... Uh, you need to call and get that information from the White House counsel. What that means is, why don't you go over there and talk to that brick wall? Because you've got a better chance of that brick wall giving you the answer you want than even getting the call returned from the White House counsel. There you go. Wow. This wow. is it's just crazy. Well, this ties right in, too. Tim Jones had written, you know, why do reporters go to the press briefings? Truth is, if they're not going to lean in and yeah. challenge what's being said to them. A great 
observation, what a great Tim observation. Jones. Excellent, because it's true. Why, why bother, other than for the entertainment of watching her get up there and fumble around and tell us how clear she is? Mm -hmm. and, well, giving us fodder so yeah. for, for what we do. We, we appreciate <laughs> it. We appreciate uh, it. Thanks. Heck, we wouldn't have a live stream <laughs> if it weren't for KGP, KJP. Um, by the way, uh, this is, I would say it's funny, but it's kind of pathetic. She, uh, January 12th, says six times that all the search for classified documents is over because they found them all. And then, oh boy, and then the dam breaks and the water flows. Let's watch. The search is clearly complete. They completed uh, the, uh, uh, the search. The search is complete. Uh, he is confident in this process. You should assume that it's been completed, yes. After the search concluded last night, that search was completed last night. Yep, it's all completed. We got them all. Yeah, nothing here, nothing to see here. Move on. Joe Biden even said to the press, I have no regrets the way I've handled this. No regrets at all. And then, little by little, like water dripping from the faucet all night long, waking us up, turns out that Joe's got documents everywhere. The Penn Biden Center, his Delaware home, in his garage next to the Corvette. He had stuff that were from his days as a U.S. senator which he hasn't been since 2009. I mean, it just keeps on coming out. And so the more we've learned, the more it's very difficult to believe anything Joe's saying about these classified documents. It seemed to be everywhere. You know, the same Joe Biden who said that for Donald Trump to have a box of them at Mar-a-Lago under lock and key with Secret Service guarding him 24 hours a day, that was irresponsible. Having him in a garage next to the vet that uh, Hunter hops in and drives around in, I know, big whoop. So Peter Ducey from Fox News confronts Corrine Jean-Pierre with the most interesting question. When you found out that the FBI had located even more classified materials in Wilmington, which four-letter word did you use? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness, Peter. Um, <laughs> I've heard fake laughs before that were much better. No acting award for Corrine. I mean, you can tell that's an uncomfortable, fake, defensive laugh to try to say, now what do I do? He's caught me flat-footed. Yeah. So I'll was... just laugh and chuckle and pretend that that's really funny. Actually, it's not funny. It's kind yeah. of pathetic. Yeah. All right, what do we got? All right, to change the subject just a little bit uh, today, um, Marlon Bashaw is asking, can you talk on the tanks that Ukraine is supposed to receive, and is this going to lead us into World War III? Thank you from Arkansas. Mm. I don't think giving equipment to the Ukrainians leads us to World War III. Um, let's be... I say, let's be real clear. It's kind of like courage on here, now. but I'm going to be clear. <laughs> They've never asked for us to put our boots on their ground. They haven't. Neither have the Israelis, by the way, which sometimes they get blamed for uh, using our military, but they don't. They use technology and equipment uh, that we have helped them with, but then they help us with some too. In the case of Ukraine, they have uh, certainly asked us, begged us for military equipment support. They have never asked us to send soldiers, never. And uh, I don't think we're looking at getting into World War III. The, uh, the provision of the tanks is certainly going to be helpful to them, um, but it probably won't in the big picture make the definitive uh, direction of the war change. I, I doubt that it will. But great question and a good insight there, Marlon. Uh, Robert Brin is writing today, uh, Governor, my wife is a legal immigrant. Uh, the form to obtain legal status has a section that states that the applicant cannot apply, apply for or receive any federal aid. Why does the government reward illegals? Well, that's a wonderful question, and uh, you, you know it up close and personal because of your wife's uh, immigration uh, legally. And I think it's the question that so many of us have raised. None of us are against immigration that I'm aware of. Maybe there's somebody who, who just sort of says, tick tock, the game is locked, nobody else can play. I don't ever hear that. I honestly cannot think of a single person I personally know who would close our borders 100% and let no one in. Because we understand. Uh, first of all, 
all of us at some point or another are the descendants of immigrants, hopefully legal, but even if we're descendants of illegal, we are grateful to this country and we live as good citizens. But immigration ought to be a process in which a person makes application and legally declares, I want to be in America because I believe in this country and I believe it offers opportunity for me and my family, but we embrace the Constitution, we embrace the way of life, and <clears throat> without immigrants, our country wouldn't be what it is today. Um, I'm grateful for the wonderful stories I've heard from people who have immigrated here. Came with nothing. I mean nothing. 10, 20 years later, they own their own companies, their kids are going to college, uh, and they love America. They love it like most Americans can't love it because they have nothing to compare to. These folks do. And I've heard that story time and again. Mm. So uh, glad your wife is, is here, glad she's immigrated legally. And I scratch my head and can't tell you why some of the Democrats think that we ought to have open borders and no process for immigration. It simply is insane. All right, let's continue. Jay Luther writes today, Kevin McCarthy said, stock trading in Congress, like Nancy Pelosi does, needs to be addressed. Will he ever do that? I'll tell you, so far, everything I've seen of Kevin McCarthy, he's doing exactly what he said he would do. He said the first thing the House would do is get rid of the 87,000 IRS agents, and that was the first bill that the House put on the floor and passed it with Republican votes. Now, it'll die in the Senate, but he, he kept his promise, and he's done the same thing. He said he was going to keep uh, Schiff, Swalwell, and Elon Omar off of uh, key committees that they were on because they were unqualified, unfit to serve. Everybody said, yeah, he's just talking. He did it, and he not only did it, but he's standing by those decisions in the midst of great uh, pressure to, to bow. So what I would say is, Keep your eyes on Kevin McCarthy. So far, he's batting a 1,000, and I think people ought to be grateful for what he's doing. Absolutely. We want to remind everybody, too, to make sure that they subscribe today as uh, we're on the air together this afternoon. And uh, certainly, that's how you find out uh, what we're doing here, of course, and, and make sure you hit that notification bell, okay? So you'll be notified every time we go live, which we try to do every single Friday. All right, Gov, uh, Winbach is writing, why did the document search begin? Um, because it was an attempt to try to go after Donald Trump. Is that the one you're talking about? I guess uh, it is, right? I, I would presume. The overall what he's document asking, search. The o overall document search yeah. is what I would presume. It was an attempt, uh, and the National Archives became the tool to say, oh, you know, we think Donald Trump has documents that are classified. Now, as President Donald Trump had the authority to simply wave his hand over them and declassify them, which he claims he did. I wasn't there, so I don't know if he did or didn't. But if he said he did, it's as good as done because he has the authority to do it. Which, by the way, is something that Joe Biden did not have the authority to do because his papers were from his days as a senator, which never should have left the building, and his days as a vice president, which he did not have the authority to declassify. But I think it was an attempt to get after Trump. They did an FBI raid on his house went through his wife's closet, took his passport, went to his son's room. They went through every single thing in his entire home. And they did it without his lawyers or representatives uh, allowed to be present. When Joe Biden discovered that there were some classified documents, I don't know, did he discover it? Some Secret Service agents? I'm not sure who was the first one said, oh my gosh, Houston, we have a problem. Joe's got classified documents. Penn Biden Center, garage, well, they knew this on November the 2nd of last year. Follow the timeline here. Six days before the November midterm elections. They didn't tell anybody. So we didn't know it, even though the FBI knew it, the Biden administration knew it, and they put it under wraps for two months until mid-January of this year. And then they said, oh, by the way, we probably ought to let you all know we found some classified documents. And pretended that it wasn't any big deal. It was very small. Lock and key, nobody, you know, nothing to see here. Let's move on. And then since then, it's just been a, a steady rain of classified documents found in the possession of Joe Biden that should never have been in his possessions. Pretty, pretty interesting. Mm.
All right, Steve C. is asking this afternoon an interesting question in Gov. Uh, what criteria is considered when putting a name on a building? There's the Joe Biden train station and welcome center, Bo Biden Air National Guard Armory. Where does it end? It doesn't. As long as people get elected to Congress, they have the, uh, the authority, if you will, to introduce bills that would name a post office, a federal building, a, a road, a highway, and they do it. They do it all the time. Let's be fair, Republicans do the same doggone thing, so it's not like only the Democrats try to name things. And, and I'll be the first to say, I really don't care. And the reason I don't care is because it really doesn't expend a whole lot of taxpayer money just to name something, the, you know, Pam Case building. Why, thank you, sir. That would yeah. be lovely. I'll give you a, we'll give, what would you like, a post office or a federal building? What, what a courthouse? Mm. Mm. Oh, courthouse might be nice. Courthouse, that yeah. might, yeah, that'd be good. It's a big, nice, stately building. That'd be better than a, than a street, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. the yeah. Pam Case <laughs> Federal Courthouse. <laughs> and then every time somebody gets arrested and does a perp walk into it, today, In the know, Pam Case, yeah. In the uh, Pam never Case mind. Federal Courthouse. <laughs> anyway, it, it's done. It's no big deal. Uh, I'm more worried about not some congressman putting name on a building that everybody can see, but signing their name to a check mm. that comes from foreign governments or insider trading that makes people on a fixed government salary multi-millionaires. Mm. That is a real concern. Hey, do us a favor. Hit the like button. We're trying to get to 1,500 likes mm. before the stream ends, so if you haven't already done it, do it helps us boost in the YouTube algorithm so the video will be shown to more people. Smash that like button over and over again. And remember, hit the notification bell, the subscribe button, and subscribe to the channel so we can let you know what's going to happen. Can't leave today without uh, this wonderful uh, video reminder of why we really aren't praying for Joe Biden to resign, because that means Kamala Harris would be the president, and that's scary. Kamala Harris goes to the podium on the uh, day uh, commemorating the decision of Roe v. Wade and makes an outrageous statement that Republicans in Congress want to ban abortion. And, and she's really adamant that what's terrible, they want to ban it from the time of conception. Let's watch. Republicans in Congress are now calling for a nationwide abortion ban. <laughs> even from the moment of conception. The right of every woman in every state in this country to make decisions about her own body is on the line. And I've said it before and I will say it again. How dare they? How dare they? Mm, Kamala, why don't you go ahead and put me down as one of those that believe we should prepare uh, protect human life from the time of conception because that's when the baby's life begins. That's a biological fact. Democrats love to say, follow the science. Okay, let's follow the science. The science is that when 23 chromosomes from a male and 23 from a female unite and create a 46 chromosome um, life, it's a separate human life from either the mother's DNA or the father's DNA. It's unique to the child. And at that very moment, conception, it has become a person, a unique person. Now you can argue, well, it's not a full person until it can breathe or live outside the womb. We can have that argument if you want. But biologically, strictly from a biological standpoint, it became a person at conception. Now what Kamala, 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 Kamala. Pick one. What she doesn't tell you <laughs> is that while Republicans do wanna protect life from conception, um, Democrats want to protect abortion right up until the moment of birth. I want you to see the contrast. And, and I'm proud of the contrast. I, I'd much rather be on the side, the, side, the side of saying, let's protect life too much than let's just let somebody decide to kill a baby. Nine months in the womb, right before the moment of birth, kill it. Just kill it. I find that appalling. And what I would say to her is, how dare they? How dare they indeed? Anyway, this next clip is Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris, and she's uh, really put herself in a box because she's trying to quote from this very, very important phrase from the Declaration of Independence, 
just tends to leave one little detail out. Listen to it and see if you catch what she missed. A promise we made in the Declaration of Independence that we are each endowed with the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, she left something out because what it says in the Declaration of Independence is that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed, that part she's right, but she missed this part, by their creator, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And here is the big part, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. She conveniently, on the day of the March for Life, forgot to say we have a right to life. She says, oh, only thing we've been endowed with is the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Well, you have neither liberty nor the pursuit of happiness if you don't have a life. Life is fundamental to that. It's the foundation. She missed it. And also, when she said we are endowed with these rights, she forgot to tell us who endowed them. It wasn't the government. It wasn't Congress. It was God. And our founders unapologetically said that these basic fundamental rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness were given to us by our Creator. And you cannot discuss those things without discussing the reality of God Himself. Um, let's take one more question and then okay. we'll about be... Absolutely. Um, so, um, Meta, of course, we, we mentioned this earlier, announced that Trump's going to be loud back on Facebook. But Purple Haze is saying, I hope Trump doesn't go back to Facebook because who's to say that they won't try the same thing again? That's a good point. By the way, Purple Haze means he must be a Jimi Hendrix fan. <laughs> I could tell. One of the greatest guitarists of all time, but that's a whole nother, whole nother live stream someday when we do just music and nothing but music. But Purple Haze, thank you for that. And I think you're probably right. Unless Donald Trump were to get some kind of guarantee that they weren't going to scrutinize him to a level that they uh, certainly don't scrutinize Joe Biden or anybody else, what's the point? Maybe they would leave him alone. We are so glad, so glad you've joined us for the live stream. I hope that even after we're off the air, that you'll know you can still leave your questions and comments in the comments section below. If you enjoyed our time together, be sure to subscribe to the channel. YouTube just doesn't do us favors by showing content to people. And the best way you can get all of our content is that subscription button, the notification bell, and by checking on the channel. We have live streams every Friday unless we tell you otherwise. We didn't tell you otherwise today because we have one. 